Hey everyone, it's Jack from Cultaholic.com back again with another news update. Happy Monday, everyone. Are you all ready for the next week of wrestling until the next big show, Backlash, which has come around amazingly fast since we only had the Greatest Royal Rumble last Friday? But it's all right. We can get through it together if we all link arms and march forth through the world of wrestling. I don't know what I'm talking about. Anyway, I am, of course, as I said, Jack from Colorado.com, and it's time for all of the news. Now, first and foremost, this is very interesting indeed. A former WWE superstar has wrestled his first match for 13 years. Um, a controversial former WWE superstar, I should say, and his name is Mohammed Hassan. Now, as I'm sure you're probably aware, but I'll, I'll say it anyway for any newer fans who maybe don't know the history of Mohammed Hassan, he was a very promising young heel who came through the ranks in WWE in sort of the mid 2000s, about, well, 13 years ago, as I said. Um, he, uh, he was a very good heel, he was very young, very raw, but very talented indeed. A lot of people predicted a very big future for him. And then through a combination of real world events and bad booking decisions, his career was effectively ruined. Um, he was portrayed as uh, an Arab American who, whose whole shtick was like, why do you boo me? I'm just the same as you. It was a very, in the right hands, it could have been a very progressive, good storyline. But unfortunately, they kind of booked him as the, the old cliched, stereotypical foreign heel. It looked as though Hassan was going to prove us wrong for booing him and for, you know, for making wild assumptions based upon his ethnic background. And instead, what happened was he was pretty much portrayed as a terrorist, unfortunately, and that happened to coincide with the tragedy of the uh, the London bombings, where I think it was in 2005, 13 years ago. His last match came against The Undertaker as part of the SmackDown brand, and then he never wrestled since. I assumed that he'd gone onto the indies just and kept sort of out of the spotlight, but apparently, according to Cage Match, which is a wonderful online database of wrestling matches and all the history of various different... You can type in a wrestler and find out what they've been up to. Uh, this was his first match since then, since that match against The Undertaker. This, this sort of yesterday's match was his first professional wrestling match in 13 years. He wrestled for a promotion called The Dynasty in Amsterdam, New York, and uh, one, he, he wrestled against a man called Papa Dom. I don't know much too, too much about him, but uh, Hassan won the match. He came out with, with his same ring name. I think he had maybe even the same entrance music, that sort of thing and pretty much was carrying on from where he left off. And it was quite nice to see, to be honest. I, I feel quite bad for Hassan, because even though he is regarded as a controversial former superstar, it's kind of for events outside of his control. It'll be very interesting to see what Hassan does next, whether he continues to accept regular indie bookings, whether he gets picked up by a bigger promotion, maybe. I think WWE would be reluctant to bring him back, given his whole history with them, which is, again, not really his fault. But at the same time, I'm pleased for him. I'm pleased to see him back after so long. And um, maybe this is more than just a one-off thing. Maybe we'll see him wrestle more regularly. I seem to remember, it was kind of before I knew much about work rate and stuff. I was a kid, but I think he was a good, he was considered to be a good wrestler. Um, so, so hopefully this is the, the start of something new for Mohammed Hassan. In other news, another UK superstar has signed a big contract with WWE and it's for a full-time position in NXT. That man's name is Danny Burch, who's been sort of a semi-regular feature of NXT over the past couple of years. Uh, he's, he was teaming with Oni Lorcan for a little while and they were a great, intense, fiery tag team. Then they split apart and now they've had, I think, two matches against each other, maybe three, or maybe there's a, a rubber match coming up in the future, I think. Uh, and basically, uh, it's very promising for Danny Burch. I think he's about uh, he's in his mid-30s. He's not like very particularly young for a wrestler, but as we've seen with NXT's hiring policy recently, it, age doesn't seem to matter too much. Nakamura is one well in his 30s. Samoa Joe when they hired him. Obviously AJ Styles on the main roster, no spring chicken either. So I think this is very promising for Danny Burch and it's a curious one because he was a feature of the last UK tournament. Maybe this implies that he won't factor too heavily in the UK division going forwards. He'll just be uh, a wrestler in NXT who happens to be from the UK rather than necessarily a part of their UK division like guys such as you know Trent Seven and Wolfgang and that sort of thing. In other UK news just for a slight diversion uh, ICW's Barramania 4 took place over the weekend and saw some shocking title changes and some heel turns. James Storm turned heel. Uh, Stevie Boy cashed in his uh, his Square Go briefcase. He won the Square Go, which is like their Royal Rumble, mixed with the Money in the Bank ladder match to, uh, to uh, during the main event between BT Gunn and uh, Mikey Whiplash, who suffered a pretty bad injury. He seems to be fine. He's been posting on social media. But during the match, Whiplash took a move through a pane of glass and just messed him up quite badly, all the little shards of glass and stuff like that. So uh, we wish... 
Uh, Mikey Whiplash, all the best in his recovery. And congratulations to Stevie Boy as well for becoming the new ICW champion. And finally, the Wrestling Observer Newsletter have revealed some humorous details regarding the Greatest Royal Rumble. Now, one of the entrances in the Greatest Royal Rumble match itself was a man by the name of Hiroki Sumi, a sumo wrestler who no one really knew anything about. I remember on the live stream when he came out, I googled him to try and work out who he was because I'd honestly never heard of him. And it turns out not a lot of people had, unless you're a big fan of the sumo world, I guess. But even a Google didn't turn up too much. So I really wondered what he was doing there. Then I kind of forgot about it as the event wore on. But um, it's come to light that apparently, and I don't know how true this is, but there was a bit of a comedic mix-up as reported on the Wrestling Observer radio show. So Mohammed bin Salman, who is essentially the crown prince of Saudi Arabia, his father is the king, but he's kind of regarded as the, the power behind the throne kind of thing. He, you know, makes a lot of the key political decisions in Saudi Arabia. He had a big hand in sort of saying what he wanted to happen at the Greatest Royal Rumble, and allegedly, and I don't know how true this is, but Melter's reported it, so take from it what you will, but allegedly he asked for three superstars in particular to be present at the show. And they were The Undertaker, fair enough. Undertaker was on the show. He defeated Rusev in a casket match. The Ultimate Warrior, who sadly passed away a few years ago. And Yokozuna, who sadly passed away a number of years ago. So I... I can't quite work it out why he requested those good. Well, I Google Mohammed bin Salman's age. He's 32 years old, right? Now, if you go back in time to when he was about sort of six or seven years old, a young wrestling fan on the scene, that would have been around the time of like Warrior and Yokozuna and Undertaker, of course, as well. He was, you know, starting his career back then. So maybe he just wanted his old favorites back and maybe he hadn't really kept in touch with wrestling ever since. So many of us have fallen out of love with wrestling and then, you know, caught up and gone, who's this? What's going on? Who's CM Punk? What's, what's all this about? But I mean, it's funny, isn't it? You've got to laugh a little bit. If it is true, if it is true, you have to laugh. So apparently then, the reason for Sumi's entrance in the Royal Rumble was to kind of appease him because he wanted Yokozuna so badly and they had to break the news to him that Yokozuna's been dead for quite some time now. Um, so they just got another sumo wrestler in, which is admirable, I guess. They made the best of a, an impossible situation. So credit to WWE, I guess. Apparently also, he wanted uh, the guy in the black hat and the guy in the crown in sort of Melter's words to come along, which are of course JR and Jerry the King Lawler. And I wondered, I did notice during the pre-show that Lawler did have his crown on, which normally when he, you know, commentates for other shows or appears on the pre-show panel, he doesn't always wear the crown, he just wears like a t-shirt with like his merch on it, but he wore the crown. I don't know what to make of it, but I, it did give me a little bit of a guilty chuckle. That's all for now. Thank you very much for watching this news piece. I've been Jack from Cultaholic.com. You can follow me on Twitter at Jack the Jobber. You can follow all of us at Cultaholic. And you can check out our Patreon as well. Patreon.com forward slash Cultaholic. And never forget, obviously, of course, to join us.